Welcome to TNT Sports Talk. Today is Thursday, October 18th. As always, we are presented by D's Home Cuts, and I am your host, Travis Karcheski. We got a huge show for you this week, um, this Thursday. We're going to get you in, get you out. You know, 45 minutes to an hour, we'll get you all your headlines that you need for the weekend so you can be smarter than your friends, family, and co-workers. So that's our goal today is just to get through these headlines and make you smarter as a sports fan. That's our goal every show. So we're going to start with baseball, uh, then we're going to go to some basketball. We had the opening night last night. We're going to talk a little playoffs in baseball. Um, then we got the NFL Week 7. We're going to give some predictions for each game, highlight a couple of the key games uh, for college football Week 8. Got a couple segments, a couple questions that uh, people sent in for us to answer. And then uh, that's it, and we'll get you out of here smarter than you were before. So let's start with baseball. The MLB playoffs kicked off a couple – Weeks ago, we are now into the second, the third round. Technically, uh, we got two series we want to highlight right now: Milwaukee and the Dodgers. Uh, the Dodgers won yesterday of a score of five to two. Uh, they've taken a three-two series lead. That that series will now go back to Milwaukee. Um, for the rest of the for the last two games, uh, Dodgers got a chance to close it out on Friday. That game will be Friday at nine o'clock. Um, it was a good game yesterday. I watched a lot of it. Um, it was on at four, so it was a little bit more difficult to watch because again, MLB doesn't know what to do, doesn't know how to market. So putting a, a playoff game on at four o'clock really doesn't make much sense to anybody else. But it's the MLB, it does. Um, it started off kind of strange. You know, there was a lot of hype around the game. Uh, you know, with Manny Machado. Uh, if you know Manny Machado, game what was it, game? Four? Four, I believe uh, he ran to first base, hit a weak grounder, uh, and they threw easily got him thrown out. But while he was running to first base, he intentionally and if you see the video, it's pretty clear he intentionally stepped on Jesus Aguilar's uh, ankle. Um, he didn't. It, Jesus Aguilar, former Indian, he didn't get hurt, uh, but you can tell it was obvious, and uh, there really was no reason behind it other than he was trying to cause injury. It was pretty clear. Um, so a lot of hype going into Game Five because everybody thought they would throw at Machado, and eventually he did. They Machado did get hit. I think his third at bat. Um, although there wasn't a warning given because it was kind of you know why would you hit him in that situation? But it was interesting because everybody thought going into the game it's going to be Kershaw uh, versus uh, Wade Miley. Wade Miley pitched a pretty good game uh, early on in this series. Kershaw, like you said, has like everybody knows hasn't been dominant in the playoffs and. Uh, you know, he's always been like a David Price where he kind of folds in the playoffs. But yesterday, he kind of shut the door on that. He pitched a pretty dominant start, I would say. You know, he pitched, you know, seven innings, only gave up three hits, one earned run, struck out nine. I think I think right when he was about to end it, um, in terms of setting down, he retired like 13 batters in a row. So a truly dominant performance from Kershaw, something the Dodgers really needed. Um, but with the Brewers, Wade Miley, uh, the Brewers... Craig Consul's trying to kind of outsmart everybody. Uh, so uh, the Dodgers knew going in that they were facing Wade Miley, so they did a pretty heavy, uh, I want to say right-handed lineup, although I'm not sure, um, a pretty right-handed lineup because they knew in game one that uh, Wade Miley was pitching pretty well versus their lefties. So they went a pretty dominant right-handed lineup. Um, don't fault me if that's wrong. It could be left-handed. I'm not sure. Um, so they started David Freeze, who David Freeze is – a veteran uh, has done been in a lot of big moments. They started him in the third spot, um, and it didn't work. And then eventually, after the first batter, so first batter came up was Cody Bellinger. He came up to the plate, uh, and they walked him. In five pitches, Wade Miley walked him. And then uh, Craig Council came out to the mound, uh, said, you know, you're done. And they brought in Brandon Woodruff, who Woodruff ended up pitching majority of the game. Let me check for you real quick. Woodruff ended up pitching five and a – Five point five innings, five and a third innings. Sorry about that. Um, he he was pretty good for a little bit. You know, he gave up five hits, th- two earned runs, struck out eight. Um, but that didn't make sense to me because I guess Wade Miley is going to be starting on Friday versus Ryu for the Dodgers. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I get it. You're trying to trick your opponent, kind of. That's what Console is trying to do, and it worked for him in the regular season. Um, but this is why this is shows the ex- inexperience of the Milwaukee Brewers and their manager Craig Council, because in theory, does that make sense? Yeah, you know, you kind of trick the Dodgers because um, they set their lineup in a certain way. Uh, so then, 
you know, when the pitcher switched out that early, it screws him up a little bit. But Wade Miley spent the entire game, he got warmed up. Wade Miley's a veteran. He's not going to, you know, cry about this. He's not going to complain. He's just going to, you know, do what the manager asks, and he's going to move on. And that's why Wade Miley's been in the league for so long. Um, but Wade Miley warmed up the entire game. Threw one batter, he walked him, so it really, really didn't work out at all. And then they ended up losing the game. I get it. Trim's gonna come on the show saying it was a smart decision. Uh, it makes sense in theory, but it just doesn't work like that in playoff baseball. And Truman's gonna say that because he, has, he doesn't have a lot of experience with playoff baseball. So in theory, like I said, does it work? Yes, but really only in the regular season because playoff baseball is way different than the regular season baseball. And now the Brewers, you know, their bullpen's a little taxed right now. Um, it was a huge risk because they did they did play 13 innings the night before. And if uh, Woodruff would have came out of that bullpen and struggled early um, and they would have had to take him out, their bullpen was already taxed from the night before and just taxing it again wouldn't have been a good idea, especially in the playoffs where you need your bullpen more than anything. Um, as far as, uh, it went though, it did kind of work out, I guess they lost the game and Wade Miley does get the start on Friday, uh, which will help them out a lot. Um, but I think now you're going back, now you're facing elimination. The Brewers have really ne have never faced elimination. Now what do they do? They've lost two straight. They haven't lost two straight in God knows how long. Now they're just going back to Milwaukee, back to their home park, uh, facing elimination, Hopefully it won't get into the minds of the players. You hope as a Brewers fan, as an Indians fan, and a guy who hates the Brewers based solely on the fact that Truman roots for the Brewers. Um, it's great because I think the Brewers are going to get into their heads a little bit. Um, they lost that game. So as much as you think, you know, this whole clubhouse is for council, when you lose a game and you make kind of a risky move like that, only face, only letting Miley pitch the first batter. Uh, the clubhouse, you know, it starts to get a little bit into their minds. You know, oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that. Maybe, maybe, uh, you know, the manager shouldn't have pitched Wade Miley one batter. Maybe we should have just started Woodruff from the first uh, batter on. You know, it really made no sense. You know, now that Wade Miley just walked the guy. Um, but I guess you know we'll, we've seen this a lot in the regular season. The opener theory where you let a guy go out there and face the first couple batters and then you switch it up really quick um and it works sometimes you know the rays have done it a lot but it really it's just not how baseball's played um especially in the playoffs where you really need your starters to go long innings and you need to rest that bullpen and it doesn't make sense you basically use two pitchers um and you, it really didn't work out for you because you ended up losing so um, we're going to move now to the next series, Astros versus Red Sox. The Red Sox are up 3-1 to one now. Um, they play tonight looking to close out that game. Um, in Houston, it's going to be Price versus Verlander. Price struggles in the playoffs. Everybody knows Verlander is a god in the playoffs. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in this game. Um, we have a lot of uh, press surrounding this series. It's interesting because you know the Brewers... They got a lot of things going on in that series with Machado and dirty plays and openers and all this weird shit. Uh, but then you go to this series and we got cheating claims up and down the field all over. Uh, the Houston Astros, I guess, have been accused of cheating. I'm not sure who who accused them, but I guess uh, I didn't do a ton of research on this. From what I can tell, the Astros, uh, the Indians actually warned the Red Sox about this. The Astros had some guy... Uh, in the press section, he didn't have press passes. He was filming the game, and I guess he was texting a lot. Um, and people were a little confused because he didn't have any press passes or anything like that. Um, and I guess you know the MLBs took a look at it and they said it was no big deal. But it's interesting because if the Indians, if it was a big enough deal so that the Indians had to warn the Ash, the the Red Sox about it, it's a big enough deal. I think the MLB takes more of a look into it. Um, because both teams know, because teams, baseball teams know when a team's cheating. And I, I don't think stealing signs and stuff like that is cheating. But when you have a guy in the stands holding up a camera, it's it's cheating. Um, but then you got, you know, the the Astros fans on Twitter, that, that grandpa or whatever, filming a video of Rick Porcello looking at his arm, saying how his arm is shiny. And there's got to be pine tar on his arm because he keeps rubbing his arm and it's shiny. And it's playoff baseball at its finest, baby. It's just every fan wants, you know, 
something on the other team. Every fan wants the hope, the small hope that they that, that they find out the team they're playing is actually cheating, and the MLB bans them from the playoffs or gives them an easy win, gives the other team an easy win because they kick the team out or whatever. It's never going to happen. Uh, were the Astros cheating or weren't they? I don't know. What Did it make that big of a deal? I don't know. I mean, they're down 3-1. Um, they lost the last two, though. You know, as soon as they got accused of cheating, they've lost the last two. Does that mean they stopped cheating? I don't know. As an Indians fan, though, we weren't winning that series no matter if they were cheating or not. We were just crap up and down the field. It wouldn't have made a matter if uh, the whole entire Astros team was juicing or not. We, we sucked. We weren't good. And it doesn't make a difference to me. But that's it for baseball. We're going to move now to basketball. Uh, opening night last night, everybody wants to hear about Carmelo Anthony and what my thoughts were on Carmelo. We'll get into it in the segments. We've got a couple segments uh, that I want to get to. But I do want to talk about uh, a couple of the games last night uh, and then the new G League deal that was just released uh that was just yeah released this afternoon. We're going to talk about it. Probably the only podcast that's actually talking about it right now. Um, but we're going to talk about some of these rookies. I wanted to get into it. I'm trying to find this tweet I had to kind of wrap, summed everything up here. Um, although, if I can't find it, uh, hold on a second, folks. Bear with me here. Um yeah, I can't find it. Um, but it kind of wrapped everything up, so I'll find it one of these one of these seconds here. But we'll we'll go ahead and while I'm looking for this, we'll start talking about the G League thing. Uh, we'll we'll get into these games in a second. So the G League was uh, everybody knows it was the D League a couple years ago, and uh, the G League is basically the minor league system for. Uh, basketball teams and it's interesting now they released a uh a clause i don't know what you call it um this new type of thing now where the g league is allowing players from high school to go straight to the g league they're going to give them a uh, hundred and twenty five thousand, i believe contract um to go play in the g league for a year they can hire an agent uh people can use their likeness they can make money they can make they can make money off sponsorships, ships, stuff like that, and then the next year they'd be moved to the draft. I'm not really sure how it works based in you know where they go, what team they go to, like because it's really only a one time, one year, hundred and twenty five thousand dollar deal. So I'm not really sure, you know what, uh, you know how you can pick what team you want to play for. Um, but it's interesting. It gives. I'm a huge supporter of college players getting the uh, the right to you know go wherever they want, make as much money as they want. And honestly, if we're being real about this, players get paid in college. It's pretty obvious. Um, even though they try not to make it obvious, it's obvious guys get paid um, in different things, different different uh, endorsements stuff like that different little things like a house or a car for their family which is not something crazy to ask for you know you just want some money so your family doesn't have to live on the street or live in a crappy apartment you want their you, you want your family to do well while you're out here you know on national television making this university millions of dollars um off your likeness and it's, it's unfair and we've had this debate in the past um but it's just really unfair, and I'm glad that this is a new option for these guys to go to the G League. Again, it just came out, so we don't know a ton of the details about it, but I'm happy that it's happening because players have been disrespected a long time by the NCAA. The NCAA, if baseball is the worst run organization in terms of growing the game, the NCAA treats its players the worst um, just simply because they have no other option. You know, they can go play pro overseas. That's unlikely, though. Um, and they basically have to go to college if they want to go to the NBA. Um, and they have to uh, live a year where they're just getting used for their likeness and their skill, used to make money. And it's just unfair. Um, and the NCAA is, it, they know it, but they just won't do anything to fix it. And they'll just keep, 
you know, hurting these players, suspending them, uh, doing all these type of things when they're just trying to feed their family. They're just trying to make it big, um, and they're holding them basically hostage. So I'm glad the G League is going to get this opportunity. Maybe the NCAA will, will relax on their rules a little bit when they when they lose that first big prospect that won't be playing in the in the NCAA. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how many guys decide to go to the G League versus uh, college. Um, I know a lot of people would rather go to college and play a lot of prospects but if they get that check they get that bag in front of them they're going to take the bag because you know why wouldn't you so we're going to talk about this a little bit more on tuesday because i think a lot of the details haven't come out yet um and we'll talk about it more on tuesday then uh, as far as rookies go last night uh, some of the top five picks alonzo trier 15 points, by the way. Alonzo Trier, undrafted out of Arizona. No reason as to why he shouldn't have been drafted. Uh, he just balled up for the Knicks last night. Like I said, 15 points. Uh, he had amazing dunk over the over a couple of Hawks. They played the Hawks last night. It was amazing to watch. Um, and I'm happy that a guy who's undrafted is making such a wave. The Knicks are a fun team. Uh, the Knicks have a lot of young players who I really like watching. Um, I used to be a Knicks fan when Melo was there, uh, and I'm sad I don't really get to be a Knicks fan for the future because they're going to be good, I think. They find they found a couple good players, like I said, with Trey Burke, Hardaway, Alonzo Trier's coming into his own, uh, Frank Nicolaki or whatever his name is, um, You know, like I said, Tim Hardaway, uh, and they're getting Porzingis back in a little bit later in this year. This is a fun team, and they signed Hizonia from the Magic, who... You know, it was a highly touted prospect coming out of uh, Europe, but he kind of failed a little bit. But the Magic haven't been known for a uh, a great talent producing organization, uh, so it's going to be interesting to see in the long run where these Knicks go if they'll be able to keep it up. Like I said, they're young. I love Fizdale as a coach. I think he is the perfect coach there. Uh, he's relatable to these young guys, which they kind of need sometimes. He's not a uh, you know a a, a stern father figure you know he's not a phil jackson uh or a popovich somebody who's going to scare these guys he's you know he relates to them well and i think that's going to work out well for them in the end as far as other rookies go trey young you know he had 14 points last night uh he looked solid i didn't really watch the game that much i saw some of his highlights he had a couple nice shots um down kick played well too you know he had 10 points but deandre ayton the number one pick of the draft, he went off 18 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists, damn near got a triple-double, uh, which is the most overrated stat in all of sports, by the way. Um, DeAndre Ayton is going to be a monster. This Suns team is going to be fun to watch. I don't have it in front of me, but Booker, uh, he went off again last night. Let me look that up really quick. Um, Booker and Ayton, he, Booker had 35 points. He's a sleeper MVP candidate. He put himself on the map last night. Again, it's the first night. There's 80, 81 more of these games. But uh, it's interesting to see. Because uh, I think Devin Booker has been one of the more underrated basketball players just because he's played with the Suns. But the Suns got a good team. With Aiden Booker, they got, you know, they signed Ariza. This is an interesting team. It's going to be interesting to watch. If they make the playoffs this year. You know, they were pretty bad last year, and it's going to be interesting if they bounce back. Uh, but Aiden, like I said, he shined. I have him in my fantasy league, and it was awesome to watch him play well. Everybody else, though, uh, in terms of the teams, will go. T- really, the only team that stood out, like I said, I watched the Rockets game. Uh, Rockets, Pelicans. The Pelicans look good. Um, Miritich looks like he's fitting into that role nicely. Julius Randle is looking pretty solid, replacing Boogie Cousins. And Anthony Davis is Anthony Davis. That's not going to change. Drew Holiday is a really good point guard. Um, and Anthony Davis is the MVP candidate we're all, we all thought he was. As far as the Rockets goes, it's going to take a little bit for them to gel. We're going to get into it more in segments. Um, the three shooting, they got to cut that down a little bit. They're not the Warriors. They're trying to beat the Warriors by being the Warriors, but they're not. They're athletic. They, the Rockets are extremely athletic. Um, they got guys who can shoot, but I just don't think they're a three-point specialist team like the Warriors. They're got they're a more athletic team than the Warriors. I think they're a little bit deeper in terms of bench. Their starters might not be as deep, but when you got a guy like James Harden and Chris Paul, uh, it's pretty solid there. 
I think Jimmy Butler would have been an amazing addition for the Rockets. Watch that if that happens. I think they'll help him out a lot. Um, but as far as it goes, I think the Rockets will contend all year. I think one game isn't going to matter. Um, and I think in the end, we'll all look and we'll see the Rockets and the Warriors playing uh, in in uh, what would it say May or June, one of the two. I don't know. Um, but that's pretty much it for the NBA. Jimmy Butler, I have no clue how he is still playing for the Timberwolves. I have no clue how they repaired that just enough. I think Jimmy Butler kind of swallowed his pride a little bit. But I have no clue how they repaired that relationship enough to where he is playing. He played opening night. That's insane to me. I, I said it on the show. I never thought in a million years he would ever be back with the Timberwolves and he is so got to give him credit though for kind of swallowing his pride a little bit uh, to make it work but uh that's it for the NBA we're going to move now to football going to give predictions on each game but before that I got to remind you guys my show is brought to you our show is brought to you by A's Lawn Service since 2014 A's has been providing professional landscaping to many homes around northeast Ohio by using professional equipment, A's constantly strives to provide families with professional landscaping at a low and fair price. Um, you find these all around wherever you go. There's a million landscaping companies wherever you go, and they're always owned by big uh, landscape corporations, and they just hire a bunch of random guys off the street. You don't know what, what their background is. You don't know who they are, but you trust them with your lawn, which your lawn is one of the most important things about your house. Uh, it really you know, sets you apart from your neighbors. If you have a good lawn, uh, everybody knows you as that, that one house that always keeps their lawn in tip-top shape, and you want to look good around your neighbors. If you have a bad lawn, everybody kind of looks down on you. So don't spend this uh, fall season having a bad lawn. Don't let it look all crappy. Don't let leaves be sitting all over your lawn. Uh, turn to A's and trust me, all your landscaping needs will not be will be taken care of and you will not be disappointed. The phone number is 330-241-2392. Again, 330-241-2392. And the email is lawnservice.a's at gmail.com. A's Lawn Service LLC. You grow it, we cut it. So we're going to talk a little bit of NFL Week 7, go through each game, uh, give a little talk about each game, a little note, uh, prediction, and we will then move on to college. We're going to start with Denver and Arizona, the Thursday night game. Josh Rosen's first game on primetime. Von Miller's talking crap, saying he's going to sack that ass all night. Um, and this is a huge game for Denver. Denver is 2-4. and four. They've been down the last couple of weeks. They started pretty well, um, and this is an opportunity for them to get a solid win um, on the road on prime time, get themselves right back in order before next week. Um, so this is a big game for them. As far as Arizona goes, they need Josh Rosen needs to have a little bit of a coming out party. He needs to give Cardinals fans a little bit of hope. I think he... It's there, but they're just not so sure yet. You know, he's not been a phenom coming on, but he's been solid, and he's been getting better as of late. Um, this is a good defense for him to really try his skills against, to see where he stacks up based on the rest of the league and the rest of these rookie quarterbacks. So, for me, I'm going to take the upset here. I'm going to go Arizona at home. I think Josh Rosen finally does prove himself. Josh Rosen was my guy coming out of the draft. I think he's going to prove himself as, you know, one of the best you know, it's kind of been, you know, rookie as far as rookie quarterbacks go, um, you know, Sam Darnold has been the clear-cut best so far, best performer so far. And I think Rosen sets himself apart and puts himself right in that conversation. Uh, but other than that, like I said, I don't think Denver's as good as everybody thinks anymore. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pick Arizona here. Let's move to Sunday now. First game is the Chargers and the Titans. Tennessee is going to Los Angeles. I'm taking the Chargers here. This is an easy pick for me. Chargers are favored by six and a half. Um, wait, why is this game so early? Um, oh, it's in London. This game's in London. Never mind then. Home field advantage is thrown out the window. Um, I actually didn't. This is at 9:30. Uh, so we're both learning new things today. This is at 9:30. It's in London. Uh, six and a half spread for the Chargers. I'm going to take that. I think the Chargers are going to win this game um, pretty handedly. Um, I'm going to take the uh, the overs at 45. Uh, I'd probably take the over here. Um, but as far as the Titans go, the Titans, they don't win pretty is the thing. When they win, they win, but they don't win pretty. They always play their teams that they play tough. Um, so they could come out playing pretty well. This is their first time in London in a long time. Mike Vrabel's first time. And... Uh, 
the Chargers first time, Anthony Lynn's first time in London. Uh, but I don't play that much much of a factor into it. I think when you go to London, you throw home field advantage out the window, and it's just who's the better team. And I think the Chargers are the better team here, uh, pretty clearly. Uh, you know, Philip Rivers is having a pretty good year. Derwin James has been. A pretty fine young safety, a pretty good rookie for them so far. Um, as far as the Titans go, I said it last. I said it last show. Mariota is not good. He's not a franchise quarterback. I put that around him, and and I think we're gonna start to see that a little bit more as the season goes. Next game, New England and Chicago. This is at Chicago. First game on U.S. soil on Sunday. Uh, Chicago. This is a big opportunity for them. If they lose. You know, that's two straight losses, two ugly losses. Um, New England, it's New England's favored by two and a half. The, the over is 49, which I would take. I take the over, I, th- I think, here. Uh, I like the Bears um, in terms of a team. I hate their guts anywhere else. Um, but in terms of a team, they're a solid team. Khalil Mack's going to be hectic as shit for the uh, Patriots. Um that offensive line's not great, but the Patriots have been better as of lately. And like I said, I'm never picking against the Patriots ever again. As long as Belichick is coaching games and as long as Brady's throwing the ball for New England, I'm never picking against them again as long as I live. Uh, so I'm taking the Patriots here. Um, I can't break that, you know, because as soon as I break it, they, it makes me look more dumb. So next game, Buffalo at Indianapolis. Uh this is would have been. I think I would have taken Buffalo here if it was a, if it was a little bit different. But we have Derek Anderson starting this game, and Derek Anderson hasn't started a game in three four years, I believe. With the Panthers was his last time. Um, I didn't even know this dude was in the league at all still. But as far as this game goes, Indianapolis is still looking to get into more of a groove. Andrew Luck's starting. Andrew Luck is trying to find some wins here. They're one and five. They desperately need a win at home. Uh, I'm taking the uh, Colts here. Although Buffalo is interesting because they have a pretty solid defense. And if Derek Anderson could provide them with a little bit of competent quarterback play, they could sneak a win here. Um, Buffalo's an interesting team. It's hard to pick against them because as soon as you do, they surprise you. Uh, But I don't give much uh, weight. I don't put much weight on the fact that Derek Anderson's starting. I don't think he's going to provide them with anything. And if they do, if he does struggle, they can't really go to Peterman because Peterman's probably the worst quarterback in NFL history. So you got to stick with Anderson, and that might not work out for you in the long run. Next game, Houston at Jacksonville. Uh, both teams desperately need to win here. Jacksonville's favored. They're both 3-3. Three and three. This is a, a big game for the uh, AFC South. Uh, Jacksonville has had two pretty ugly losses in a row. Houston's won, I think, two straight, I believe. So this is a big game for both teams. Uh, the line is set at 41.5. I take the over in that, I think. I don't think the Jacksonville Jaguars defense... Uh, no, I'm going to take I was going to go somewhere but I'm going to go a completely different direction. The Jaguars defense has been disrespected over the last couple of week, uh, last couple of days. Rex Ryan called them overrated on some TV show. I can't remember which one it was. No, he called them overrated. I'm sure they're looking at that. I'm sure they see that. I think they come out and absolutely smack the Texans. I think Bortle gets a little bit of revenge and they get a win here at home. A nice win here and they stop the bleeding for a little while. Uh Detroit at Miami, uh, Brock Osweiler won last week for the Dolphins. He will get the start again this week. Tannehill is still going to be out. Um, Detroit has had a pretty bland season. They're two and three. The Dolphins are four and two. Uh, this is a good opportunity for the Dolphins to really set themselves uh, in, into a good position to, uh, you know, for the rest of the season. Go start five and two. And then you get Tannehill back. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pick. Miami, eh. Yeah, I'm going to pick Miami here because I'm not really sure what Brock Osweiler is going to do. I don't really know what he is all about yet. He had a good start last week, but he always kills the Bears, so I don't know. But I'm going to pick Miami here. Uh, I like I like um, the weapons Miami has. I like Amendola. I, Amendola. I like Albert Wilson. Kenyon Drake's a fine young running back. Frank Gore is always is a Hall of Fame running back. He still's got he still has a little bit of gas in the tank. So we're going to go ahead and pick the Jacksonville. I mean the uh, Miami Dolphins here. Sorry, I was looking at the last game. Next game, 
Jets and the Vikings. Vikings go to New York to take on the Jets. The over is 46. Um, the Dolphins, I mean, the Dolphins, I'm losing it. Uh, the Vikings are 3-2-1, their third place, and the Jets are 3-3 three and three in third place in their respected divisions. So, the, the Vikings have come on as of late. Kirk Cousins has given us little pump-up speeches. I'm sure you've all seen those. Trying to hype out this, these teams, this, the, his team. And it's worked out in the past couple of weeks. Um, but Sam Darnold has come on as of late. Uh, but I just think the Vikings defense, the Vikings offense is just too talented. The Jets are going to be a good team here in a couple of years. Dan Darnold's going to be that franchise quarterback. But I just don't think it's going to matter here. I'm taking the Vikings. And I'll prob I probably would take the over here, though, over 46. Next game, Carolina at Philadelphia. This is an interesting game, a really interesting game. Both teams need wins. Uh, both teams, uh, Carolina's 3-2, and two, Philadelphia's 3-3. Three and three. They're both trying to win their respective divisions. Um, Philadelphia had a really good game last week. Again, that was against the Giants. Uh, and Carolina lost versus a bad Tampa Bay team. So, when you look at this game, I think you got to look at the quarterbacks, uh, Carson Wentz and Cam Newton. Those two guys are really the top of the NFL in terms of talent, in terms of you know age. These are the guys we're going to be looking, we're going to be watching for the next couple of years. Uh, I'm going to take Carolina here. I think Carolina's pissed they lost last week. I don't think they should have lost last week. Um, and I think Philadelphia is riding a little high off of a win versus a crappy Giants team. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Panthers here. Uh, I think they bounce back in a big way. Cleveland at Tampa. Uh, Cleveland's 2-3-1 and one, and Tampa's 2-3. and three. Tampa's coming off a of bye week. That's huge. I put a lot of weight into bye weeks. Giving coaches a week to prepare, two weeks to prepare basically for a team is a big deal. Um, the Browns had a pretty ugly loss last week. Um, I know they're going to be looking. The over is 50 and a half. That's, that's a lot for me. Um, I take the under here. Um, but Winston did play well last week. I just don't think the Browns offense is as good as everybody thinks. Um, well, nobody really thinks they're good. Everybody kind of thinks they're pretty bad. Their defense is good. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how many picks Winston throws here. He will throw a couple picks um, just because he's that quarterback. But I'm going to take the Browns here, I think, on the road. Uh, I don't think Tampa Bay is that good, and I think the Browns are really good um, in terms of defense. And I think defense here is going to win out. Um, Tampa Bay just fired their defensive coordinator. They got a little bit of a shakeup here. I'm going to take Tampa. I'm going to take Cleveland on the road. Next game, New Orleans and Baltimore. New Orleans goes to Baltimore to play uh, the Ravens. Um, this game starts at 4.05. New Orleans is coming off a pretty big win. Um, they're 4-1 right now. And then the, the, the Ravens, sorry about that. I'm a little lost right now, are 4-2. and two. Um, I'm going to take the Saints here, put them at 5-1. and one. Uh, the Saints are the better team. These are two really good teams facing each other, but I just think the Saints' um, offense is too quick for this Ravens' defense, and this defense for the Saints is pretty solid, and I think Joe Flacco is going to have a lot of problems going against guys like Jordan. Davenport's played pretty well. Um, these guys are going to give him fits all game. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Saints here. I just think the Saints are the better team uh, overall. But I do like the Dolphins. I do like the Ravens. Why do you keep saying the Dolphins? I don't know. But the Ravens. I like the Ravens a lot. I think they're a good team. They're not Super Bowl contenders by any means. And I think the, the Saints are. So I'm taking the more talented team with the Saints. Dallas goes to Washington the next game at 425. Um, Dallas had a big win last week. Washington needs a win too. This NFC East is wide open. And both teams are going to be fighting each other each every single week. Um... It's interesting because you know you win your division, obviously you get in the playoffs. Both of these teams kind of play to their level of their competition, I think. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens when they, you know, they when they play each other. Washington hasn't looked great as of late. Dallas has. Um, if Dak Prescott can do what we think he can do, he's an average quarterback. If he can just manage the offense, get him moving down the field. If they can get Zeke the ball, Zeke Elliott the ball 30 plus times a game, this game, I think Dallas will take the win here on the road. Um, but Washington Stadium is pretty shitty. And it's kind of hard to play in uh, in terms of field uh, performance. The field is really crappy. Um, so I'm going to take Dallas here, though, even though 
surprised. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Washington gets the win. Next game, Rams and 49ers. 49ers had a pretty big showing out on Monday night. They played the Packers really tough. Beathard looked pretty solid um, in his uh, game on prime time. But the Rams have looked pretty sh- pretty bad as of late. They're 6-0, only undefeated team left. The 49ers are 1-5. They need a win desperately. The Rams have been kind of bad as of late. Even though they've won, they've been ugly wins. I'm not saying it's an upset. I'm going to pick the Rams here. I think the Rams are the better team. I think the Rams are one of the best teams in the NFL. But again, they're going to the 49ers. The Rams haven't looked good as of late. They've been struggling. And I could see an upset. I'm not saying it's an upset. All I'm saying is I could see an upset. I wouldn't be surprised. But I'm taking the Rams. Cincinnati at Kansas City on Sunday night. This is a big game for both teams. Kansas City lost their last primetime game. Uh, they're 5-1. and one. The Bengals are 4-2. and two. They lost a pretty big game last week. Anthony. Anthony. And Andy Dalton. What am I, I'm, I'm lost right now. Andy Dalton in primetime games usually sucks pretty bad. Um, and Pat Mahomes hasn't been what he was the first couple of weeks as a late. Um, he's been a solid quarterback by any means. He's been a franchise quarterback. But he hasn't been the amazing uh, Pat Mahomes that we saw early on. Um, but I think the Kansas City Chiefs will win here. Uh, the, this would be a big game for the Bengals if they won this and they, they would go to 5-2 and two and they would, they'd pretty much put themselves in a really good position to win that AFC North uh, for it later in the year. They'd turn to 5-2. and two. The Chiefs need this win. They need to stop the bleeding. So do the Bengals. Both teams need a win. This is going to be a fantastic game on Sunday night. And everybody's going to be watching. But I'm picking the Kansas City Chiefs here. Last game, Monday night, the Giants at the Falcons. It makes no sense to me as to how the Giants keep getting Monday night, primetime, Thursday night, uh, Sunday night type of games. I get it. It's the New York Giants, but they're really bad. This team is really, really bad. They're not fun to watch at all. Um... It's kind of sad watching them. It's kind of sad watching a guy like Eli, who, you know, we've all, you know, grown up with, kind of, you know, watching him play at such a high level. It's sad watching him digress a little bit. Same with Peyton Manning when he was falling down. It was sad to watch. But uh, I'm taking the Falcons here. Their Falcons aren't great, but the Giants are just so bad. This team's falling apart. We'll see Odell have another meltdown on the sidelines, probably if they lose this game. If they lose this game, it's going to be dangerous because God knows what's going to happen to that team in terms of uh, off the field in the locker room stuff. I think Shermer will start to lose the locker room a little bit, and guys like you know Odell will start to speak out. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Falcons here. I think the Falcons are a good team who just hasn't put it together yet, and I think this is a huge opportunity for them to put to ramble off two wins in a row and get them right back into the you know right spot that they need to go. So that's it for NFL Week 7. It's going to be a huge week, a lot of games going on, and a lot of action. We're going to go to college now. We're going to talk about some key games here. Not a ton of games I want to talk about. Um, we're just going to go through some of these ranked teams, ranked matchups. Ohio State plays Purdue. Uh, that's the primetime game on Saturday night. Uh, number two, Ohio State versus unranked Purdue. Unranked 3-3 and three Purdue. It's primetime Saturday night at the Shoe. The reason they did that is they, they, this game got flexed out. Even though it's not even close to the best game of the weekend, um, it's kind of scary because Gus Johnson makes it feel like it's a big game when it really shouldn't be. It, this should be a noon game. But they flexed it out because Ohio State really hasn't had any home games on primetime. Um, so it's going to be a fun atmosphere. Hopefully this isn't a trap game because Ohio State's got the bye next week. But, uh, you know, I'm a little nervous. I always get a little nervous during these types of games because you never know how they're going to come out and play. Uh, but the first ranked team we're going to ranked opponents we're going to see play each other is number 6 Michigan at number 24 Michigan State. Michigan State's 4-2. and two. They've had some ugly losses early on, but they did beat Penn State last week, so they could play spoiler for Michigan. Uh, This is a big rivalry. It's at noon. It's at Michigan State. These teams hate each other. Uh, It'll be an interesting game. Um, Next game I wanted to talk about was NC State and Clemson. NC State's 5-0. Clemson's 6-0. I really 
love Finley, the quarterback for the NC State Wolfpack. He is one of my favorite prospects coming out of this draft. I just love him. I love the way he looks. He has such great arm talent. Um, as far as Clemson goes, how will they you know, respond? This is really their first big opponent they've played. Uh, how will Lawrence play? It's going to be interesting to see, uh, and it's going to be a game to watch. This game is on at 3.30. Uh, so tune into that. Um, the next game, next ranked team, number five LSU is playing number twenty two Mississippi State. Uh, Mississippi State's a good team, but LSU coming off a big one versus Georgia. This could be a trap game, but I think LSU and Coach Ed Ogeron will get them playing well. Um, and I, I would take LSU here. Last game, twenty five Washington State is playing twelve Oregon Herbert. This is game is on at seven thirty. Um, it's a prime time game. Uh, Herbert, like I said, is the best quarterback prospect coming out this year. You'll you'll hear his name a lot in this upcoming draft. Um, he will be contention for a first for the first overall pick for a team that trades up like the Giants. But Oregon, this is a good opportunity for them to bounce back, really put themselves in playoff contention, getting another win. And Washington State, I love Mike Leach, so I would I would I'm rooting for Washington State here. But that's it for college week eight. It's crazy we're already through eight weeks of college and seven weeks through the NFL. Next week we'll be halfway through the NFL season, regular season, and that's crazy to me. Uh, but we're going to go now to some segments. Got a couple great segments I want to you know, debut here and a couple questions. But before that... I wanted to remind you guys that our show is brought to you by D's Home Cuts. That's right. D's Home Cuts is the best place around Northeast Ohio. You all know this. For a great haircut at a low price, for only $7, you can count that on your hands, uh, you can get a modern haircut and styling. Uh, Sherman and I am, and about 90% of our guests have been getting their haircut at D's for the last couple of months. We have never looked or felt better. Um, almost a year now. We're almost at a year anniversary, actually. I think we are at a year. Um, but... Again, every time you go to the shop, they get better every single time. The cuts are amazing. He does such a great job. Uh, ladies, he doesn't forget about you. He's, he's dabbling. He's dipping his foot a little bit in the water, um, starting with girls' cuts. Um, but he is just the best barber around Northeast Ohio for a great haircut at a low price. You can find these home cuts on Twitter or Instagram at these home cuts, where you can find all of these videos of all these different cuts he's done. He just does a great job, and you won't be disappointed. Uh, you can set up an appointment right there in his bio. DM him for any questions you may have. Other than that, check these home cuts out. These home cuts, professional haircuts at a low price. So let's get into some of these questions we got. But first, we got some segments for one segment, really. Mellow MVP update. So there I was last night sitting on my couch getting ready to uh, ring in another NBA season. I get it. It started on Tuesday, but really was last night was really the, the opening night um, in terms where everybody was just playing, and it really felt like a solid NBA night. Um, and I sat down. I had a lot of stuff to study for, but I did turn on the uh, Houston-New Orleans game to my shock. Carmelo Anthony came off the bench. Um, that made no sense to me as to why he came off the bench. He ended up playing 27 minutes, which wasn't great. Um, this is this broke this broke his streak for games starting. I think he was second behind Patrick Ewing in terms of games started, um, and uh, that's disgusting to me. Why you wouldn't start Carmelo Anthony? Why you would start James Ennis over Carmelo Anthony makes no sense. Ennis is a fine young player, and I get it. But uh, you saw what you saw what he provides when he came off the bench. Did he shoot for three for eleven? Yeah, he did. We're not gonna hide from it. We're not gonna run from it. He shot no. He shot three for ten. Sorry, my mistake. He shot three for ten. Wasn't great. But you know what he did do? He came to this game. First time he got in, the Rockets were down 10 points because the Rockets, all they do is shoot threes and every single and they'll make some every now and then, but most of the time they don't, they make threes and they don't play defense. Um, which Carmelo, everyone would say, oh, that's what he does. But no, Carmelo is much more than just threes and doesn't play defense. So Melo came in off the bench. He shot a long two, which apparently, um, I've been hearing rumors about this, apparently they don't want him to shoot twos anymore, which doesn't make sense because Carmelo is a three shooter and he is a long mid-range two guy. He he plays really well, that's his game, and to try to get him off of that makes no sense. He shot 40% from that last year, um, which isn't great, but it's pretty solid um, in terms of a team who doesn't shoot long twos at all and all they do is shoot threes. Um, but he shot a long two. 
drained it, went back on defense, got the rebound, did his signature cussing after he gets the rebound, uh, get the hell out of here, the thing you can hear all over um, your TVs, which just gets me going more than anything, that's my favorite thing, but then he did my first, my most amazing, my favorite thing about Carmelo Anthony, he went down, and he drained a three, hit him with the three to the head, and walked down court. And then they put him on the bench a couple minutes later. Makes no sense to me why he keeps sticking this guy on the bench when he just keeps making play after play. He ended up having a dunk. Um, he missed a free throw. He missed one free throw, ended up making the other one. You know, all of that added to his nine points. Carmelo, like I said before, if you've been following our Twitter, this is a safe podcast for Carmelo fans. Um, when Truman's here, it gets a little hostile, but we're able to kind of shut him down. Carmelo doesn't deserve to be on the bench. They're going to see that in the long run. They're not, they can't keep a guy like him on the bench for long. Um, and they need to let him play his game. When teams start to try to change the way he plays, it's going to affect him. He's not a just a primarily three shooter. He likes to make twos. He's good at long twos. He can get your rebounds. Um, and he can get your dunks, apparently now, that old fella getting up there. Um, you can't keep him on the bench. It's not going to happen much longer. Fans are going to start to riot. We're going to start to riot. But like I said, this is a safe place for Mellow fans. We're not going to slander him anymore. Um, the hate is over. I think the hate has negatively impacted his career up to this point, and we're not going to stand for it anymore. Question and answer. I don't want to get too pissed off here. Uh, question and answer. Um, do we think we only got two here? What do I think of LeBron debuting versus the Lakers? That's great. I don't with the Lakers. That's great. I don't care. I hate LeBron. Uh, I'm well documented in hating LeBron. Growing up in Cleveland, hating LeBron isn't ideal, but I feel like most Cavs fans should hate him now. I hate how he went to L.A. I hate everything about the man on the court. Off the court, he does some good things, but on the court, I hate LeBron. I hate how he's so cocky and arrogant. I really don't care tonight, although I am going to watch because it's going to be interesting to see how this team comes together. Next question, is Kevin Durant going to leave Golden State after this year? I'd like to get into this a little bit more with more with some guests. Um, I do like um, this topic, but I do want to get into this more with other people, debate it a little bit. But in my flat-out terms, no, I don't think KD will leave Golden State. Um, I think he'll stay. You know, why would you? If they win a championship this year, why would you leave? I think Draymond Green or Klay Thompson is more adept to leave, but... Uh, KD's been playing pretty well there for Golden State. I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. So I don't think he's going to leave. Short answer, no, but we will get into that a little bit more later. Uh, other than that, though, that's the end of the show today. Um, it was a great show today. I thank you for listening. Again, I hope you're smarter than what you came in here for, uh, than when you came in here. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at TNT Sports Talk 12. That's where you're going to find all of our uh, updates for the show the next day. Guests, uh, DMs are where it's at on Twitter. If you ever want to talk to us, you ever have questions or comments or concerns, send us a DM and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. We're usually pretty quickly because me and Truman are both on the Twitter, so we, we both are looking at it. Someone's usually on it you know, within, the, within an hour, so you shouldn't wait too long to get a response back. So send us a DM if you have any questions you want answered. We'll give you a, you know, a giant thumbs up letting you know we'll be on the show different things um, if you want to be a guest we got a lot of things upcoming in the future so this is the really the place to be looking twitter is the place to be looking um, for any updates about the show you can find this on itunes we ask that you give us five stars rate review us and subscribe um, download our episodes we want to thank you to our sponsors these home cuts and is lawn service they've been here since the beginning and they've been here every single show since um Listen to us on 12 Ounce tomorrow from 12 to 1. You can find us on YouTube. Um, YouTube's a little confusing because sometimes I don't get the episode up on time. Uh, I don't get the episode up at all because the converter we use to get the video, the podcast to a video, sometimes breaks and it's just a mess. And I realize that not a lot of people listen to it on YouTube, but it is a good place to go um, to tell people to listen. But we are trying to get on more platforms. But other than that, have a great day. Tune in on Tuesday. We'll give a Carmelo Anthony MVP update. We will also go over every single game from Week 7. Uh, Packers have a bye week this week, so I'll be able to watch a little bit more of a variety of games. Uh, so I should you know, have some pretty good information there on Tuesday. But other than that, have a great day and tune in on Tuesday. Have a great weekend, guys.